I have got to uh, take a minute to talk about the Angel Tree program. Yeah, as soon as I can figure out something about my computer. There we go, that's better. Um, I wish Joe Noss was here, Joe and Tara or Sarah Carlson, because they did so much work on that program that I'd love to uh, really recognize them in person, but unfortunately we're a little sparse today, so we're gonna have to recognize them without them being here in person. But I do wanna tell you a little bit about how the Angel Tree program works. Um, Ivy Lane Elementary School is one of the, uh, one of the schools that, that has a lot of underprivileged children there. And we ask the teachers to identify those children that are in the most need of support during the Christmas season. So the teachers do it in a very, um, very nonchalant way, very indescript. They, they, the other children, in other words, don't know that these children are being singled out as being supported from the, by the Rotary Club. And uh, then the children are all interviewed by, by Sarah and Tara Noss and um, I believe Joe as well but they all do interviews with the kids and say, hey, you know, what is it that you'd kind of like for Christmas? And they get uh, a wish list from the kids. They do that in October. Then they come back and we, we get all those lists of kids. They get it all organized and put on the computer. And then we all as a club step up, of course, and pick different kids that we want to sponsor. Um, some people pick one, some two, three, four, five, up to 10. Uh, we have one member that picked 10 kids to sponsor, which I think is just terrific. So. All of the uh, gifts then are purchased and put into gift bags. Then the reason they use gift bags is they used to actually just uh, wrap up the presents for kids in regular Christmas paper. And then the kids would have to go back to the bus stop and they're carrying all these big gifts back and they said it was a real problem for the kids. So uh, they decided no, no more wrapping the presents. They're all gonna be in gift bags. So the kids can walk out of there actually carrying their, their presents in a bag and it helps them get, them, get the presents home. So, um, I got there yesterday and watched the teacher, the teachers got the kids out of class and uh, got them all to come into the auditorium and we had all the gifts lined up on the tables, one through 72, all of them numbered and all the kids have a number they've assigned to them, one through 72, and then the kids all have to stand in front of the, the bag that's got their number on it. And boy, you talk about some anticipation. These kids are sitting there, they're told, don't you look in that bag. Just sit in front of it with your back to the bag. And, and these kids were just on pins and needles. You could just tell the excitement in the room was really something. And um, they do a little thing there in that school. And I hadn't seen it personally before, but and maybe you all have. But when the kids are really um, getting kind of out of control and you try to get their attention, the teacher just starts counting. One, two, three, four. And then the kids by now, they all know what's going on. And then they say five, six. And then if they're quiet enough, the teacher will say seven. And then the kids say eight. And it's a, they, it's a regular game they play, but it gets the kids all focused in. And by the time they get to 10, you could hear a pin drop in that room. Everybody's attention is there. So I want you all to see a video of what occurred yesterday. We've all picked your guys' gifts, and we're here. We're so happy to experience this with you guys. 
uh, hopefully you have fun. Um, and what I'd like to do, because it's going to be chaotic, is on the count of three, if you guys can say thank you to the Rotary Club, we're going to we're going to take some photos. So one, two, three. Everyone turn around and face your gift. Don't peek yet. Stay seated. All right. Stay seated. I see some eyes peeking. And we're going to count down from 10. All right? So once we get to one, you got to open your gifts, all right? So 10. I'll tell you, you have never seen kids more excited than opening those gifts. I mean, it was it was heartwarming, to say the least. And uh, I'm really glad that I got a chance to participate in it. And I hope next year that any of you who were thinking about this and decided you didn't want to do it, I hope next year you decide to do it because I'm telling you, it's an experience that you won't forget. So thank you all for that. Now I've got, um, we want to talk about... Uh, well, we have a guest here, Jasmine Flores, president of the Maitland Rotary Club, is going to come up and talk about our Rotary Youth Exchange. So, Jasmine, let's have a hand for Jasmine. Thank you guys for the very warm welcome. Um, I'm really excited to be here today just um, to visit as a Rotarian, um, but also to share some exciting information about our youth exchange program. Um, thank you so much for sponsoring Lucas. Um, I heard that he's just having an exciting, um, really amazing time here in Central Florida as the rest of the exchange students are. Um, so I wanted to share that we have an immediate need for some additional approved volunteers with the district to help with some of the fun things that the exchange students have been able to do um, and will continue to do throughout their stay here until June, I believe. Um, so raise your hand if you're currently an approved volunteer for youth exchange. A white EO, do we have a white EO here? No? Oh, okay. Well, um, if that's something you're interested in doing, um, let me know. The district has approved for like two to three additional members in each club, um, especially a host club, to be approved to help with um, things like transportation um, with Lucas and other exchange students. 
Um, we also made a decision as a committee at the district level to um, approve for just two inbound students for next year. So this year, our district welcomed six students from different countries into our district. Um, next year, we are reducing that to two. And the reason for that is um, due to some infrastructure challenges that we've had this year. Um, as you may, may or may not know, um, we are still actively searching for um, two additional host families for the remainder of um, two uh, students stay here this school year. So in efforts to make sure that um, we have the proper infrastructure for next year, we've reduced it to just two. Um, so if that's something that your club is interested in sponsoring again, um, please let me know or um, Jen Ferguson, the uh, District Youth Services Chair, know. Um, trying to think, I think that was about it. Um, but if you or somebody close to you is also interested in being a host family next year. Um, that's something that we're gonna need uh, four to six host families for the two students in the same school district um, for next year. So if you have any questions, I'll stick around after, but thank you so much. Thank you, Jasmine, we appreciate that. Um, as you all know, this is our final meeting for the calendar year 2022. I can hardly believe the year went by very quickly. So next week is the annual Christmas break. No, no meeting then. The following week is the annual New Year's break. The next meeting we have will be in 2023, January. I think it's January 6th, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, anyway, first Thursday in January. You all know. You can figure that out. Uh, but one of the things we talked about on our in our um, annual board of director or our um, monthly board of directors meetings this week, we uh, were talking about the poker tournament. It's a hot topic coming up because it's coming up the beginning of February, and we're going to really get into gear right after Christmas. We're going to make this our full time uh, assignment and really start moving. I asked Bob Phipps to come up today and just talk a couple minutes about what we need and what we need to accomplish and uh, what we're going to accomplish over the next uh, 45 days. I miss this. Boy, it's been a long time. <laughs> you know, here's what we what I want you all to understand about the poker tournament. And David brought it clear again to me when he said, you know, the only people that play in that poker tournament are people that are the serious poker players. And I don't know any of them. That's not true. You know, what we developed was a team event. And Tony can tell you on how the all the inexperienced players that we had. I know Tony was here. He should have been up here. Uh, he snuck in that's hard to do but he did so let me tell you what we're trying to do i've had people come to me and say you know are y'all doing a poker tournament this year because they're a company they don't even know who is going to actually be playing on their team but they have actually had a team the last couple of years and they want to do it again that's what this thing is about we have had speakers come up from the county um, various ones that have come out through the year and they have said, oh, we'd love to have a turn, you know, we'd love to get a team together. That's what this thing is about. It is, okay, yeah, probably the thing's gonna be won by one of those people that all they do is play poker, but that doesn't matter. It is a fun event. Um, the casino is a big part of this thing and it is February 4th. Now, Tony <clears throat> and Mike and I, of course, over the past few years have done it. Tony and Mike are chairing it this year, but we have developed some materials and some letters that if you literally just took an email and changed the top out and sent it out, okay, we could see if it works. Do you know anybody that's a head of a company or, or way up in a company or whatever the case may be? That's what we're looking for. The biggest difference in the event this year is there's only five people per team, which we feel is going to be a lot easier to get people there, you know, as opposed to trying to get 10 people. Trust me, they can find five people. So that's what this is about. Now, this is up until now has been our largest fundraiser. I know we're working on some other events that hopefully become our largest fundraiser. Things going to happen February 4th, whether or not we have a ton of people there or not. So I will get with David and we'll try to figure out a way to disseminate this information that would be so turnkey for y'all if y'all would just do it. And you would be surprised. This is for Valencia scholarships, guys. You know, this is so we can, you know, start the year, start that calendar year pretty big. And to tell you the truth, had we gotten a hold of them a month ago, it's too long. People, you know, make make their plans a month in advance. 
you know, this is now the time to get a hold of them and I'll send it out. And the other thing we have a great need for, Jason is going to help and some other people are going to help and Tony probably knows some too. We probably need to even have a Zoom meeting, maybe even next week, just sometime during the day or something so that we could actually get together on the social media and PR stuff that we can do. It's been too great of an event and to, to let it go. So thank you for any help and certainly come see me or Tony or, or Mike and, and we can maybe get this thing going because I want this thing to be huge. It's, it's a team event. It's a lot of fun. And uh, anybody can play. Even David could play. No, no, no you could. You might go out. Or take, you take my money away from me. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot, Bob. And Bill, you have a, uh, something to add. Just, just to add to this, request uh, to send uh, request out to get prizes. We have a draft letter that will soon be finalized. And Dick gave me today our tax exempt certificate. So when you you'll be able to send a letter and the tax exempt certificate so people can write off uh, whatever donations they might make. And that'll be available like Monday. So please, if you want it, give me a call, send me a note, and we'll send it to you as a package. Okay, thanks very much, Bill, we appreciate that. And now I'd like to have Bill Pooper up here to introduce our guest speakers, uh, choir today. I'm gonna to be very brief because we're running a little late, but. It's a pleasure to welcome the, uh, the children and uh, the leadership of Lake Eola Charter School back for us to help celebrate the holiday. You can see the children here. I want to thank Principal uh, uh, Joey Bishop for being here and uh, taking uh, uh, time to, uh, uh, I, I said Bishop, I have a habit of doing that. Joey Parrish, forgive me. Uh, but please, please, please welcome the children from Lake Eola Charter School. Yeah, I thought. 
Thank you so much, and good afternoon. We are so excited to be here. I would love to say it was beautiful December day. We are calling this liquid snow, right? Um, so that's that's all it is. But I want to say thank you for having us here. Um, this performance last year kind of was our springboard to uh, some really exciting things that are happening in Lex. Um, after this performance last year, we actually decided to start a year-round choir. So a lot of the people that you see in front of you are in our year-long choir. That means every week after school. Um, and we're just so excited to be here. Our theme this year at Lake Eola is we are returning to our traditions and roots because we are celebrating our 25th anniversary. I know that's nothing compared to the Rotary, which is 102 now, right? 101 for this chapter? 103, wow. So we still got a long ways to go to catch up. But for our 25th anniversary, we wanted to return back to our traditions and roots. So everything that you hear today is music that has been around for the past 25 years. Um, and so we're really excited about that. Hopefully some of it will take you back to your childhood or your children's childhood um, and just enjoy hearing some holiday carols and songs today. And please feel free to sing along. There'll be a couple interactive points where I'll turn around and I'll look at you. If you check under your chair and you have a sticker, then you have one of the solos. <laughs> Bill, did you not put the sticker out? Oh, okay, never mind, never mind. So then just anybody who wants can just sing along with us. So. Uh, but our next song that we're going to sing is one of our favorites. It's called You're a Mean One. Yes. Mr. Grinch. Today we'll say You're a Mean One, Mr. Weatherman. Uh, but yes, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. <laughs>
All right, you chipmunks, ready to sing your song? Yeah, well, today we are. Yeah, yeah let's, let's sing it now. Okay, Simon? Okay. Okay, Theodore? Okay. Okay, Alvin? Alvin. Alvin! Okay! Okay, fellas, get ready. That was very good, Simon. Naturally. Very good, Theodore. Uh, Alvin, you were a little flat. Watch it, Alvin. Alvin! Alvin! Okay! Usher and dancer and prancer and vixen, comet and cupid and donner and blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rock the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw.
so much. Uh, before we finish, we're going to do one more song for you today. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to kind of introduce you a little bit to the choir. This is one of the things that I think makes Lake Eola Charter School so special. We are a K through 8 charter school. Now, I will tell you, we have kindergartners that are in this choir, but because of the weather, we normally would walk our students here today to perform. Because of the weather, we could not walk them here. So we have parents, uh, a few of them that are around, who have graciously been carpooling the back and forth. But you know, kindergartners, they're smaller, they need the special seats, and so we have no kindergartners up here in front of you today. But I do want to introduce you, do we have any first graders? No, I think they were too small. Second graders, raise your hand. Third grade, raise your hand. Fourth grade. Fifth grade. Sixth grade. We don't have any seventh graders today, do we? Seventh? No. And eighth grade. There's one eighth grader that's with us today. So. <laughs> So we, we are, again, are so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you to Bill for inviting us back over. Um, thank you to Ace Cafe and to the Rotary Club for feeding us today. That was wonderful. Um, we really do appreciate that. And thank you to our parents that took time out to carpool and make this happen today. We're going to finish with one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time. It's called We Need a Little Christmas. For some of you, it might be new. I learned this when I was 12 years old, when I was singing in my back in junior high school choir. Do you remember the term junior high? Okay, so in junior high, in my seventh grade choir, I learned this piece with my choral director, and I fell in love with music during, the, really during this song. And I sang it all the way from seventh grade through 12th grade. And then when I graduated college and I became a music teacher myself, I taught it to every single one of my students, whether I was teaching middle school or high school. There are probably 3,000 students out there over the 13 years that I taught chorus that know this song. When I became an administrator, I thought I would never have the chance to do this again. Little did I know the secret that is Lake Yola Charter School would say, sure, if you want to direct a choir, you can do that. Um, and so I've had the opportunity to now teach this to a brand new group of students. That's what it's all about when we return back to our traditions and roots. Dr. Dennis Price was my choral director when I was 12 years old and instilled this in me. It's my honor to now give this back to the community through these students. So we hope that you enjoy our final piece. It's from a, a Broadway show called We Need a Little Christmas. Enjoy. Hear it. Let's hear it for the kids of Lake Eola Charter School. Let's hear it for Joey Parrish. Joey, thank you very much. And let's hear it especially for these parents that drove their kids here in the rain.
Thank you so much for doing that. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right.